namaste and uh, welcome to yet another lecture on uh, linear algebra through geometry and uh, in this module we've been looking at uh, the uh, uh, what do you call the idea of uh, um, uh, we actually looked at the eigen values eigen vectors and then we also looked at uh, the notion of uh, symmetric matrices we were looking at real symmetric matrices and in fact we proved that uh, certain important properties of real symmetric matrices especially with respect to eigenvalues and eigenvectors and stuff. Um, so, what we do now is basically we are going to look at a couple of more interesting properties of uh, uh, real symmetric matrices. We have already uh, made a couple of statements like uh, the if the uh, if A matrix is a real symmetric matrix we said that uh, in case if uh, the eigenvalues are all distinct then the eigenvectors corresponding to the uh, eigenvalues are all orthogonal to each other that is something which we have seen. And uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to say that the eigenvalues associated with real symmetric matrices are real and then we are going to look at the geometric interpretation of the action of a real symmetric matrix on a particular um, vector x. So, that will be the agenda for this lecture and uh, after this we are going to look at uh, uh, the idea of uh, quadratic forms where we will see uh, the positive definiteness, positive semi definiteness, negative definiteness and negative semi definite matrices and so on. So, we will be looking at the idea of quadratic forms after this. So, let us get started we are going to look at again real symmetric matrices. So, recall that we are going to look at this. So, we are going to say that the eigenvalues of real symmetric matrices are real which means uh, the eigenvalues cannot be complex numbers. So, you are not going to get complex eigenvalues you are just going to get real eigenvalues. So, that is what we are going to look at. So, let us look at the proof. So, let us quickly do the proof. Let A be a real symmetric matrix. Uh, real symmetric matrix and uh, let lambda be the eigenvalue of A eigenvalue of A and let U be the eigenvector associated with lambda associated with lambda. <coughs> now, uh, I mean lambda can be complex your components of the uh, of vector u can be complex. So, suppose assume that ok that if lambda is complex suppose let us say lambda is complex or let us say let lambda be complex. Which means this is of the form lambda is equal to let us say a plus i b. So, the complex conjugate of lambda is basically the complex conjugate of lambda is equal to a minus i b and let us call that as let us say lambda star. So, lambda star is equal to a minus i b. Now, similarly the components the components of u 
similarly the components of u can be complex may be complex numbers so what are we going to do we are going to have u star so we are going to have u star to be the complex conjugate of the vector u complex conjugate of u the vector u uh, so basically we will say that lambda star u star is the complex conjugate of lambda u complex conjugate of lambda u. Now, uh, so what do we have? We have a u is equal to lambda u that is the eigenvalue uh, I mean u is the eigenvector and lambda is the eigenvalue this implies we say that a u star that means the complex conjugate of the vector u is equal to it is scaled by lambda star which is the complex conjugate of lambda and let me say this is equal to lambda u star. This I can write this as I can write this as u star transpose a is equal to u star transpose lambda the complex conjugate. So, now what we are going to do is we are going to look at the dot product of so let us look at the dot product of let us look at the dot product of a u with the complex conjugate of the u vector which is basically the u star. So, what are we going to get? We are going to get so a u with u star is nothing but u star this implies that we are going to get um, ok let us take u, u star the whole transpose a u because we have I have already taken the dot product which is u star transpose a u uh, which is basically let us say u star a u is lambda u. So, I am going to get u star transpose lambda u. Similarly, I can take similarly we can look at the dot product of we can look at u star transpose a multiplied with u which is basically what we had in the previous uh, equation which is basically u star transpose a. So, I am going to take with u. So, what I am going to do I am going to get this I am going to get this as u star transpose we have uh, a u dot a u which is nothing but let us say u star transpose lambda star. So, what do we get lambda star u. So, let us let us write this once again let us do this. So, what do we have we have a u star is equal to lambda star u star and u star transpose a is equal to u star transpose lambda star. So, we have u star transpose a u is equal to u star transpose lambda star u. Now, if you look at the let us erase this. So, that we can look at so this is what we have here. So, if you look at the left hand side of this and the left hand side of that these two are as the same therefore, what we have we have. So, let us call this as 1 and let us call this as 2 LHS of 1 and 2 are the same therefore, we have therefore, we have u star transpose lambda u is equal to 
u star transpose lambda star u that means the complex conjugate that you get, but these two are scalar. So, what we have is essentially we have this uh, lambda times u star transpose u which is the same as lambda star u star transpose u. Now, u star transpose u is nothing but the length of the vector the squared length. So, what we are going to get is we have lambda. Uh, so, let us look at this. So, this implies u star transpose u is nothing but absolute of absolute of u 1 square plus u 2 square plus u 2 square plus etcetera which is basically the squared length of the vector. And we know that the squared length of the vector which is basically sum of squares is equal to 0 only when the vector is the 0 vector and hence therefore, this is not equal to 0 right. This is a, this is a vector which is not the 0 vector therefore, the squared length is not going to be 0. So, essentially what we have this is going to be the same as that therefore, what are we going to have this simply means lambda is equal to lambda star. This just implies lambda is equal to lambda star. Now, we see lambda is of the form let us say a plus i b and this is equal to a minus i b which essentially means b is equal to 0 which implies lambda is real. So, thus what we have established we have established the eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrices the eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix is real uh, I mean are real. Right. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at a very important aspect which we have been telling for quite some time that we have not looked at that is basically the action of a matrix A on a particular vector. So, what are we going to do? We are going to look at this consider A a real symmetric 2 by 2 matrix. I am just going to look at a 2 by 2 matrix A 2 by 2 uh, real symmetric matrix let us say with distinct Eigen values lambda 1 and lambda 2 with distinct Eigen values lambda 1 and lambda 2. Let let us say u be the Eigen vector associated with lambda 1 Eigen vector associated with lambda 1 and v be the Eigen vector we be that associated with Eigen value lambda 2. Now, what do we know because the matrix I mean you see that the matrix is a real symmetric matrix with distinct Eigen values therefore, I know that the Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values of real symmetric matrix are orthogonal to each other. So, this implies I know that u transpose v is equal to 0 that is u dot v is equal to 0 because Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values we have just proved that in, in the last class Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values distinct Eigen values 
of a real symmetric matrix R orthogonal to each other. Right? This is something that we know eigenvectors corresponding to distinct um, eigenvalues of real symmetric matrix are orthogonal to each other. So, that is something which we know. So, what do we mean by that? We know that u transpose okay, uh, u transpose v or u dot v is equal to 0 there and uh, therefore, what are we going to do? We are going to look at this. So, the matrix P we are going to populate it with the two eigenvectors namely u v the diagonal matrix is going to be lambda 1 lambda 2 the other fellows are 0. So, what do we have? We have a p is equal to p d right. Um, so, now what we do is consider this vector u consider the vector u which is let us say two components we are looking at uh, uh, the transformation a 2 by 2. So, we have a vector u which is a two component vector this could be of any length all that we have is u and we are orthogonal to each other. So, this could be of any length. So, what do I do now I create I get a unit vector from this basically I divide I normalize this and I get a unit vector. So, what I do is let me say I have u hat. So, I can scale this by so scaling by the length we get its length we have a unit vector right we have a unit vector let us say u u hat let me put that okay or let us call that as u anyway it is just the scaling. So, let me call that as the vector u now what I am going to do is I am going to say similarly we can scale v similarly we can get a unit vector v by scaling by dividing by dividing v by its length. Right. So, what do we get now? If we divide this v by its length, let us do this. Now, what do we have? We have u dot u to be equal to 1 because now we have made that as unit vector v dot v is equal to 1. This means u transpose u is equal to 1. This means v transpose v is equal to 1 but we already know that u dot v is equal to u transpose v is equal to v transpose u is equal to v dot u is equal to 0. Why? Because they are already orthogonal vectors. So, what do we have? We are going to get orthogonal we are going to get u and v to be orthonormal vectors u and v are now orthonormal vectors therefore, the matrix P that I am going to get here therefore, P is basically going to contain let us say the unit vector let us say u and the unit vector v. So, here u comma v are unit vectors. Therefore, what we see we see that the matrix P is an orthogonal matrix matrix P is an orthogonal matrix. Now, what do we mean by orthogonal matrix? we already saw the definition a matrix is said to be orthogonal if the columns are of unit length and the columns are orthogonal to each other. That means, every column vector in the matrix is going to be a unit vector and they are orthogonal to each other. So, you are going to get mat this therefore, this matrix P is an orthogonal matrix. Now, we also know something more about orthogonal matrices what is that? We know that for an orthogonal matrix for an orthogonal matrix P that also we saw in the previous class with uh, the example of our uh, rotation matrix. So, we had for an orthogonal matrix P, P inverse is equal to P transpose 
we can actually look at that it is it's easy to prove that P inverse is equal to P transpose. Uh, what we do is just take uh, the uh, let us take the vector with the matrix P, P is going to be say UV and P transpose is equal to U transpose and V transpose. So, we are going to get P transpose P is equal to U transpose V transpose into U V. So, what are we going to get? This is going to be U transpose U, this is U transpose V, this is V transpose U and this is V transpose V. U transpose U we already saw that it is going to be uh, uh, the vectors U are U and V are unit length. So, the diagonal elements are 1 and 1 and u and v are orthogonal to each other therefore, these two elements become 0. So, therefore, you see that p transpose is p and therefore, p transpose is basically my p inverse. Now, why do we even look at this? This is because recall that recall that if um, I mean if you have a, a is a real symmetric matrix. A can be written as P D P transpose all other Eigen decomposition for non symmetric I would say for any matrix ok for non symmetric or for any matrix diagonalizable matrix A let us write this for any diagonalizable matrix A we can write A is equal to P D P inverse for case of real symmetric matrix it is going to be just P D P transpose. Now, why do we want to look at this? So, let us look at something more suppose I want to look at the action of A on a vector x let let x be any vector, let x be any vector right. Um, of course, we have considered u, we have considered a to be a 2 by 2 matrix if I am not wrong we have considered a by 2 to be a 2 by 2 real symmetric matrix therefore, it is going to of, uh, it is going to um, act upon a two component vector. So, I am going to say any vector in R 2. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to figure out what is A x A is, is equal to what. So, what does A x mean? What does this geometrically mean? Let us look at that. So, let us look at A x. A x is equal to A I can write this as P d P transpose x right. A I can write this as P d P transpose x. What is P? P is basically this matrix which contains u v and we had this diagonal matrix which was lambda 1 0 0 lambda 2 and then we had P transpose x, P transpose x is basically U transpose V transpose into the vector x right into the vector x. Now, what is it that we get? So, if you look at this we have U V, we have lambda 1 0, 0 lambda 2 and what does this become? It this actually becomes U transpose x v transpose x right this basically becomes u transpose x and v transpose x and that gets scaled by this lambda value. So, we have u v into lambda 1 u transpose x lambda 2 v transpose x and that is going to be the following this is going to be 
lambda ok this is going to be u lambda 1 u transpose x plus u uh, plus v lambda 2 v transpose x. Now, if you look at this lambda 1 is a scalar lambda 2 is a scalar. So, I can pull that to the front. So, I can say this as lambda 1 u u transpose x plus lambda 2 v v transpose x. So, we have a x is equal to this. So, I can write this as lambda 1 u u transpose plus lambda 2 v v transpose into x. So, what do we see here? We see that the matrix A is nothing but lambda 1 u u transpose plus lambda 2 v v transpose. Now, I will do a small thing here. What is it that I want to do? Let me just divide by. So, if you look at the denominator in this case, the denominator in this case both are 1. So, I can write this as lambda 1 u u transpose divided by 1. 1 is basically we know that the vector length of u the vector u is basically 1. So, I will write this as u transpose u plus lambda 2 v v transpose divided by v transpose v whole into x. Now, if you see a x it is going to be lambda 1 u u transpose x divided by u transpose u plus lambda 2 v v transpose x divided by v transpose v. Now, there is something interesting that is happening here what is that? We have already seen a matrix of this form we have seen matrices of this form what are these matrices? These are precisely the matrices which are going to project any given vector onto the direction of u and onto the direction of v. These are rank 1 matrices because you have u u transpose this is going to give me a square matrix of rank 1 v v transpose is going to give me a square matrix another square matrix of rank 1. So, what am I going to say? I am going to say that a matrix is basically a linear combination of two rank 1 matrices where the scalars are basically uh, the basically like how we write in terms of vectors we write c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2. So, we have this lambda 1 into this matrix rank 1 matrix which is defined by u u transpose and lambda 2 into the other matrix which is v v transpose. So, what do we see the effect of a that is something interesting if we see here the the action of a. So, the action of a so let us write this note that note that u u transpose divided by u transpose u is a rank 1 projection matrix projection matrix that that projects any vector onto the direction of u onto the direction of u. Similarly, v v transpose divided by v transpose v is again a rank 1 matrix is again a rank 1 matrix that projects that projects any vector onto the direction of v. So, therefore, what do we see the effect of A which was basically lambda 1 u u transpose divided by u transpose u x plus lambda 2 u I mean v v transpose divided by v transpose v x. Now, so what do we say here? What does this mean? So, it simply means that the effect of the let us look at the so let us let us uh, put that 
compact. So, what we say is the action of a real symmetric matrix, the action of a real symmetric matrix we can interpret this as interpreted as a linear combination a linear combination of projections on to the orthogonal eigenvectors right this is what it is let us just quickly run through an example and see if this is what happens. So, let us look at our usual example there I have a is equal to 2 1 1 2 and lambda 1 was 3 and then the corresponding eigenvector u was 1 1 and lambda 2 was 1 and the corresponding eigenvector v was 1 minus 1. Now, the unit vector from here is basically 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and the unit vector here is basically again 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 right this is what we have. I want to look at a x I want to look at a x that means let us say 2 1 1 2 I want to see what does this 2 1 1 2 do to this vector x 1 x 2 assume that x 1 x 2 this x vector is basically let us take this x vector to be 3 4 we do not even know what. So, what is it that we are looking for we are trying to look at what happens to 2 1 1 2 I mean what happens to this vector 3 4 when it is acted upon by this matrix 2 1 1 2. So, what are we going to get we, this is going to be 6 plus 4 10 and this is going to be 3 plus 8 11 right. Let us see if this is what we get when we do it as a decomposition like what we saw. So, we know that A x is nothing but lambda 1 u u transpose x plus lambda 2 v v transpose x let us see that what is lambda 1 3 and the vector u was 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 v transposes 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and the vector was 3 4 and lambda 2 let us see what it is it is 1 into we have v v transpose which is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 and the whole thing into that x vector which was 3 4 right. I have not divided by this v transpose v and u transpose u because I have already made them to be unit vectors. So, what am I going to get this is going to be 3 into 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2. So, basically this vector is going to be 1 by 2 1 by 2 again what we are going to get 1 by 2 1 by 2 3 4 plus I have 1 1 into what is that again it is going to be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 right. So, this is going to be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and that is going to be minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 into 3 4. So, what do we have here we have 3 by 2 plus 4 by 2 which is 7 by 2. So, 3 into 7 by 2 and then we have 3 by 2 plus 4 by 2 this is also say 7 by 2 plus we have 3 by 2 minus 4 by 2 which is minus 1 by 2 and minus 3 by 2 plus 4 by 2 minus uh, plus 1 by 2. Let us check if that is what we get 21 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and then we have 21 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is basically 20 by 2 which is 10 and 21 by 2 which is 
22 by 2 which is 11. So, we get the same thing. So, what is it that we see? Whenever you have a real symmetric matrix with distinct eigenvalues, you can find the orthogonal eigenvectors. You have orthogonal eigenvectors over there. Therefore, the effect of this real symmetric matrix A onto that vector, I mean on a vector x is basically to project that vector onto these orthogonal axes and scale the projection. Essentially what we see is these are going to be linear combinations of projections onto orthogonal eigenvectors. So, till now whatever we have done is like if you if you give a if I have a matrix A and then I do A x numerically we understood what it does. But geometrically now this makes more sense when you look at a real symmetric matrix you see that essentially you are trying to project the vector onto the orthogonal eigenvectors and kind of express uh, the, uh, the resultant I mean basically you are trying to express the effect of A as linear combinations of the projections onto orthogonal eigenvectors. I mean this is uh, this is something which you will also see suppose if I give you a vector 3 2 and I want to look at why I mean uh, the effect of the identity matrix on 3 2 you will actually see that 3 2 is first projected onto the 1 0 axis. So, you get this component which is 3 and then you add it with 3 2 projected onto the 0 1 axis. So, you get the component 2 you add these 2 you get 3 2. So, that is exactly similar to what we are doing here. So, essentially what we have is if you have a real symmetric matrix with distinct eigenvalues the, the effect of A I mean the action of A on a vector x is basically linear combination of projections onto orthogonal eigenvectors. This holds good if you take any n by n matrix with distinct eigenvalues you will end up getting this you will end up getting that um, A x is basically sigma lambda u 1 u i u i transpose x. In fact, you will see that if the matrix is not symmetric if you are going to have a let us say uh, uh, any m by n matrix where um, the idea of uh, determinant and uh, other things do not even exist. What we do is it is not even defined. Uh, so, what do we do in that case you look at A transpose A and A transpose and the moment you look at A transpose A and A transpose we have already seen that they are symmetric matrices real symmetric matrices and therefore, you try to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for those matrices. And that is exactly what we will be doing in our singular value decomposition where instead of trying to you know look at uh, a single matrix P which is going to diagonalize that matrix A I am going to look at two different matrices which is basically U and V you are going to call that matrix uh, you are going to express this matrix A as U sigma V transpose like how we had P D P transpose here you are going to have it as U sigma V transpose and that is exactly where we get into the uh, I mean that is basically what the singular value decomposition of the matrix A is. And that is the topic for our next module. Now, we are, I hope we have understood the idea of uh, or the, uh, the effect or the transformation that A does a real symmetric matrix A does uh, uh, I mean what is the transformation of a vector by this real symmetric matrix A we found that this is going to be linear combination of projections. Now, this real symmetric matrix plays a lot of interesting uh, roles in different uh, applications. In the next lecture we will look at quadratic forms, we will talk about certain interesting topics out there and then we will proceed with singular value decomposition in the next module. Namaste.